Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExecuteAutomation.com. This is part 21 of our Coder UI video series. And in this part, we are going to discuss about error or exception handling in Coder UI testing. So here, we are going to use try catch block to handle the exception which occurs in Coder UI test execution. So please note that the try catch block should not be applied if the control itself does not exist. Rather, it should be applied only if certain verification property does not meet certain conditions. Since adding try catch block to the control itself will make the unexpected behavior of your test. So to understand this fully, let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we have been working for a pretty long time right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify or I'm going to add the exception handling for my get text method. So Consider this situation. What if the username that you have entered here for the property of get text has changed from username to usernames, right? So your test will throw an exception here and the further operations whichever you think it should behave will not be performed. So to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the property name of username to usernames I'm going to save it right here and let me just try to run this test. So for that I'm going to test explorer and I'm going to hit run selected test. So it's just the verification of the text is not available. So it's throwing an exception here but we expect further operation to happen because it's just the verification of the operation has got failed but the whole test itself has got failed in our case. So this is not what we are expecting. At that point, we expect somehow this exception has to be handled. So what kind of exception is being thrown by Microsoft? It is Microsoft.VisualStudio.TestingTool.UITest.Extension.UIControl not found exception. So this is the exception which has been thrown to our test. So what I'm going to do is we can handle this using a try catch block in the get text method which we wrote in the part 20 of this video series. So what I can do is let's try to add a try catch block. So I'm going to add try and then I'm going to add catch of UI test control not found exception. So you can see there is a exception class right here and then I'm going to give a variable for this. But right now I'm going to add some intelligence to this get text method. So let's say your text or the property that you're trying to pass here has changed. So you should not throw an exception, rather you should give a message to the caller. The caller is nothing but our assert.r equals. So you should give a message to this guy stating this property usernames does not exist. So just give him a empty message or not available message. So I'm going to show a empty message here. So if this value does not meet, then this method is going to give me a empty message. So for that, I'm going to add a variable here, a string. Let's call this as result. So I'm going to return the, or let's do like this, result is equal to this, and then return the result. All right, so whatever value I get here, I'm just going to assign it to a variable result and then I'm going to get, I'm going to return this result, right? And if this does not exist, then again, return empty, right? That's it. So you can do this way for your test, right? But still, your assert.r equals will fail because if this property does not exist, then this property is going to throw you an error, right? So let's demonstrate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this thing and then I'm going to hit run selector test right now. And you can see the test is again going to fail, right? So now it seems like we're getting a different error here. Seems like uh, 
wherein the same UI test control not found exception. Let me see what mistake that I did in the code. Hmm. Oh, okay. Do you see that? It's UI test control not available exception. I have cast the wrong exception here. Maybe I should capture UI test control not found exception like this. And now if I run this test, we'll get a different exception, of course. But that's the exception which I'm expecting right now. I'm expecting an assert exception. Okay, great. Right now, the exception is perfect. Now we are getting a different exception. It's assert.r equal fail because the expected is Karthik, but the actual is empty. Remember, in our method, we have returned an empty if the exception happens. Right? So, UA test control not found exception is happening, and that's why the empty is returned. So, how to handle this situation as well? Because I want my test to execute, to continue, even if the controls get text is not available. So how to handle this? So again, just try to copy this code. Maybe I'm going to comment this code out. And then I'm going to write one more method here, just like a wrapper method for my cert. So I'm going to call this as equals, right? And then I'm going to pass expected and one more string as actual. I mean, we can also pass a, a message. All right, great. And then I'm going to write the assert in the try catch block. So what is the exception that we're getting in assert? It is assert failed exception, I believe. Yeah, assert failed exception. So this is the exception. And then we can pass this guy, the assert.r equals right here. So here it is expected, comma, actual. And the message is nothing but the message which we're going to pass. Great. And let's write the message like this. E dot message. Great. So now we have written a wrapper method for our so dot r equals. Right. So let's call this equals method here. All right, and let's pass the same parameters for this equals. Great. So now it performs the same operation, the verification operation, but it still makes our test to continue rather stopping in the middle. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to run this test and let's see how things works right now. All right. It performs the click operation as well. You see that? And then it types the initial KK there. Great. So now our test still works. If you see the output here, you can see there is a failure. A dot R equal failed. So the expected is Karthik, but the actual is empty. And it gives us a message stating no match of the actual versus expected. So this is what is the expectation of our try catch block. So this is how we can handle the exception. We can hold it somewhere else, rather stopping the test in the middle instead of performing some of the important operation, right? So this is how you can do a exception handling with our try catch block in code or UI test. So this is the difference between assert and the try catch block. So assert, if it fails, it will throw you an error in the middle and the test will not continue further. So if you use try catch block, your test will still fail, but your test will not stop in the middle. Rather, it continues and the exception you can see once the test is fully complete, right? That's the difference between assert and try catch block. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.